right? Yeah. Okay. And then going on, uh, you know, we kind of talked upon this uh, with the app and the, the bells and the whistles. And, you know, it's it's part of, you know, the psychology behind it and, yep. you know, releasing endorphins and, you know, the game. Uh, that was one of the big things that it was. It was the game of playing Uber and Lyft. Uh, yep. So it's the gamification and the gamblification uh, that we've kind of been talking about over the last couple of weeks. Uh, so let's get right into that. Okay. Uh, so here's, here's a little... Okay. So I. Hello, everybody. Good. Okay. I don't want anybody to get offended. Okay. Number one. Now, I've been talking to a lot of behavioral scientists, psychiatrists about this for a long, long, long time. Okay. Now they all equate the gig economy. I'm not talking just right here in general, and this happens actually with DoorDash the most. But as I said in my you know, Uber uh, support message. I go, this is such an easy thing. We pick up people point A, drop off people point B. We, we pick up packages point A, drop off point B. Most of the time without knowing who the passenger is or the customer is. And we pick up food and drop, pick it up at a restaurant, drop it off at their door, take a picture and we're out of there. Why is all this necessary, right? The reason for this is all of them unequivocally have said, search, you have to equate this to training a puppy or being at the casino sitting in front of the slot machine because that is what they are trying to get you to do. Why do we need, I said, why do we need all these bells and whistles, all these names, all these quests, all these, the surge, the colors, the, 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 you know, the notification sounds. There are thousands of people who are behavioral scientists, psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers working at very high salaries at all these so-called high-tech companies, okay? They need this. They need to do this in order for you guys, the driver, to be trained properly. And when you do fall out of this training, the antidote for the training, by the way, is here, okay? This is the antidote. This is the vaccine, people. It's been sitting on my head for the last, I don't know how many months now, how many weeks. Now, we're going to go a little deeper into this. Um, to me, everything is based on principles of reinforcement. There's positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement. This happens with puppy training. This happens quite a bit in the casino in front of the slot machine, one arm bandit. And just when you're about to walk away, they will the machine the slot machine will throw a couple of cherries at you for you to go sit there. Well, this is exactly what happens when it comes to rideshare driving or the gig economy. These are not my words. These are experienced professionals' words that are teaching me this. And I kind of believe everything I read so far. Now, you guys may disagree with this. You guys may say this is denigrating. I'm not a puppy. Well, like it or not, you are being trained like a puppy. Maybe you're not, but you are being trained like one. So there is a thing called operant conditioning, okay? Operant conditioning occurs when an association is made between a particular behavior and a consequence for that behavior. So they initially, what happens, we all know, what happens, there is a honeymoon period when a driver signs up to the system, okay? For the first month or two, they're going to get some good, decent orders on food delivery, they're going to get some good ride share trips on, on that. And then what happens? And you, as you know, Uber got you in the system now and Lyft and DoorDash and Instacart. And now they start weaning you off. But they're always checking with you saying, okay, if I wean this guy off or a person off too fast, are they going to continue behaving or are they going to rebel and turn the app off and disappear? Okay. Now, there's two things. There is positive reinforcement in this mind game, and there is a negative reinforcement. We know what positive reinforcement is. We all trained our puppies. If Most people have puppies. Positive reinforcement occurs when a behavior results in a favorable outcome. Okay, in example, a dog receiving a treat after obeying a command. There you go. So you obey a command, Uber will give you a quest. You finish that quest, maybe you'll get another quest, but only Uber knows this, right? or a student receiving a compliment from the teacher after behaving well in class. We all have done this with our kids. We have done this with our puppies, okay? These techniques increase the likelihood that the individual will repeat the desired behavior in order to receive the reward again. Now, compare this to your life in the gig world, okay? What part of this is true? What part of it is not true? Now, 
There is also a negative reinforcement, okay? Negative reinforcement occurs when a behavior results in the removal of an unfavorable experience. In example, an experimenter ceases to give a monkey electric shocks when the monkey presses a certain lever. So basically, the negative reinforcement is they want you to stop doing something, meaning maybe declining trips, right? So if you stop declining trips, which is our acceptance rate, okay, then they may throw you a better trip coming up. A lot of people do believe that their acceptance rates are directly tied to how much money they make on these apps. Bogus, it's not whatsoever. However, I do hear this quite a bit from people who accept every trip. They are under the belief, they're trained enough, saying that, yeah, if I don't accept trips, I'm getting horrible trips, lowball offers. If I accept the trips a lot, my acceptance rate is 90%, I'm getting all these good trips. Not so. So in this, in this system, it starts with this, right? Now, and, and on the next page, Chris, jump on the next page. All right. So the po neg positive punishment we talked about, negative punishment we talked about. And, and um, we're going to go now into after the two months, Uber is not and Lyft and DoorDash are not done with you yet. Now we have to keep this driver interested. The sounds, the bells, the diamond zones, the boost zones, all the, you know, circles and all the colors, the red changing to orange, surge disappearing, surge showing up. These are all affecting chemicals in our brains. This is a given. This is exactly the same thing as you sitting in front of the slot machine and trying to figure out what the pattern is. When am I going to get paid? When am I going to hit the jackpot? Well, you may hit the jackpot. Maybe the algo will make you hit the jackpot twice a week. And then just to keep you interested so you don't turn the app off and cuss them out and quit. Or, you know, they're going to lose you. Well, if they lose you, then they have to spend tons of money on marketing and get new drivers on. It seems like this behavior, you know, lasts about eight to 10 months, which is the average lifespan of a rideshare driver. 80% quit after that because it takes them about eight to 10 months to figure out that they've been played. And, and once that happens, Uber and Lyft and DoorDash have to spend billions of dollars in marketing to get new onboard new drivers. That's why they always need drivers, always need, because they know all this lasts eight to 10 months and it passes. So one other thing I'm going to talk about, and then we're going to get into the sub phases of this. Behavior shaping, right? Shaping happens in a step-by-step -step fashion as each part of a more intricate behavior is reinforced. Shaping starts by reinforcing the first part of the behavior, right? Which is the first two months you're in, you're in honeymoon, you're loving it, you're driving, you're meeting people, you're seeing new places, you're getting paid at the same time. What could be better? Once that piece of the behavior is mastered, now that you guys are used to all these juicy quests and, you know, boosts and all those good chips that are showing up and you're making 30, 40 bucks an hour. Now that Uber has you trained or Lyft has you trained all these, I want to say gig companies. Reinforcement only happens when the second part of the behavior occurs, right? This pattern of reinforcement is continued until the entire behavior is mastered. So once they have all this within your system, then they're going to start weaning you off. And that's where we're going to get into that. Um, and there's an example here. It says, for example, when a child is taught to swim, she may initially be praised for just getting into the water. Well, we just signed up and we got onto the system. We got a good quest and we're going. Then she's praised again when she learns to kick. Well, now we accept it. Now our acceptance rate is at 90%. Behavior is correct. Continue going. You're doing great, the driver. And again, when she learns specific arm strokes. So it, it, each phase, these people are studying you. They're figuring your behavior out and they're feeding you what they think it's necessary to continue with this praise right and then on the next you know couple of pages we're going to go into this schedules of reinforcement this came from a very 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 smart gentleman who's a behavioral analyst okay and i couldn't do this without him so I, you know who you are i'm not going to mention your name i thank you i appreciate everything you have done about this okay so there's two things in schedules of reinforcement and then there is five sub phases and you guys are all in one of these. You guys are going to figure this out. The two most important things in schedules of reinforcement is the response rate, meaning if I give you candy, how are you going to respond? Obviously favorably, right? Which is the rate at which 
a rat is pressed the lever to get the food. So I'm not saying anybody's a rat. I'm not saying anybody's a puppy. But in the wild, we are rideshare drivers or gig workers, and we're trained this way. We're being trained. And these overpaid people at these companies are all testing this on you guys nonstop. So before you accept a trip that is five bucks for 11 miles, please think of how you've been trained. And please, please just decline. Okay. And then each one of these response rates has an has an equal extinction rate, meaning if they don't keep praising you, are you going to keep doing it? Because some people after two months, they're trained so well that they're going to keep accepting that 90% of the time. At that time, they don't need to feed you any more candy, right? But then there are some rebels like me and probably a lot of people in our chat who are veterans who are going to say, oh, no, screw this. I want more candy because if you don't give me the candy, Hence, show me the money. I'm not going to drive. So now Uber goes, well, okay, this guy is not accepting trips. He's a tough one to crack. We're giving him all the candy. He's got all the endorphins flowing, but he's still resisting. Why? I'm resisting because I've been vaccinated with this. So please vaccinate with this. It's free vaccine. Unlike other vaccines we've been through the last three years. Right here. This is free, people. This is free. Okay. Now, continuous reinforcement. It's pretty simple. An animal or human, slash human, is positively reinforced every time a specific behavior occurs. Every time the lever is pressed, a pellet is delivered, and then the food delivery is shut off. But you have to conduct that. You have to do what they're asking you to do to get the, to get the reward, okay? Now, and this gentleman broke it down in the response rate is slow, extinction rate is fast. Why? Because if you don't press the lever, you're not going to get the reward, right? So is is anybody in the chat or whoever's going to watch this in the replay, is this one of you guys? Continuous reinforcement. Well, that's me. I need continuous reinforcement because I'm not buying it. I'm only been vaccinated with this. So you give, show me the money. I'm going to drive for you. My time is for sale to the highest bidder. I have nine apps on my phone. Is it DoorDash? Is it Uber Eats this week? Is it is it, uh, you know, Lyft, which was this week, and I even sent Chris the shots. Well, you guys are going to see it next week. Lyft goes, oh, well, this guy hasn't been driving for a while. They go, let's throw him something. They did. They threw me 26 trips for 400 guarantee. I knocked it out in a day and a quarter. I took their money, and now I'm going to wait until the next candy shows up, right? Because I have all the other apps that I go, okay, now this week my time is for sale to Uber. Maybe my time is for sale to DoorDash next week, okay? The second one is fixed ratio reinforcement. Behavior is reinforced only after the behavior occurs a specified number of times. One reinforcement is given after every so many correct responses, okay? For example, a child receives a star for every five words spelled correctly. Response rate is fast because the second you get it, you do something five times in a row, you're going to get a reward and you go, oh, I'm going to do it five more times. Oh, I'm going to do it five more times to get my reward. And the extinction rate on this is medium. This is not the preferred method Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and Grubhub, all the gig companies use either. Because they don't want to keep putting out every five times. They don't want to keep putting out like me, only show me the money time. They don't want me. They, a and B is what the companies don't want. So please be A and B, get vaccinated. Now, the third one is fixed interval reinforcement. This is after a fixed time interval providing at least one correct response has been made. An example is being paid by the hour. Another example would be every 15 minutes, half hour, a pellet is delivered, right? And then food delivery is shut off. Now, this does this remind you guys of lift streaks? This is exactly what that is. Well, between 9 and 10, you got $15. Oh, also between 11 and 2, you got $15. Oh, but see, this is exactly the fixed interval, re interval, interval re reinforcement. And response rate is medium. Extinction is medium. So now, this is, this is being tried with Lyft quite a bit these days because then they went from streaks to streak zones. You know, they're playing around with your mind saying, is this going to work? Are we going to get enough drivers out when I put this box over here? So this is the, now Uber, Lyft, DoorDash are getting warm on these now. The next one, variable ratio reinforcement. Behavior is reinforced after an unpredictable number of times. For example, gambling or fishing. Sure enough, you put the line in the water, yeah, you get it, you get it, you don't get it. But in gambling, especially in front of the slot machine analogy, 
you know, it's really, really, really relevant, okay? So on this one, now, now you're in the dark. Now you're really gamping, right? Now you're in front of the slot machine. You kind of figured out after seven pulls, you're getting a couple of, you know, cherries. You go, okay, I got this thing figured out now. I'm going to stick around for another seven pulls because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get another cherry after seven pulls. No, 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 no. You're not going to. You don't know. And this is where Uber, Lyft, DoorDash play the game really well at DNE. Response rate is fast because the second you get that cherry, what happens? All the endorphins flow in your head. You're a happy person. You're not depressed anymore. You're not cussing anybody out. Happily, you jump and do the task at hand. And on this one, extinction rate is very slow, meaning you are hooked now. Now you go, okay, where's my cherry? Where's my cherry? I'm so hooked. Where's my cherry? It's coming. It's coming. Well, sometimes, some days it will, some days it won't, but now you're hooked. Now you're in their grasp. And the other one, variable interval reinforcement is providing. One correct response has been made. Reinforcement is given after an unpredictable amount of times has passed. Now you're completely in their, in their grasp, in their hooks. You go, they give it to you once a day. They give you a cherry a couple times a week. Well, you don't even know, but you're so hooked now to this game that you're in. You don't even know what the heck is going on. But once in a while, they give you a cherry and they go, okay, here you go, search. Take this one. I am A. I've been vaccinated. Don't play their game. And on this one, response rate is fast. Extinction rate is slow. So what they want you to belong is group D and E. They want the response rate fast. Get the endorphins going in your head. And the extinction is slow because now you're hooked. You're thinking, okay, around the corner, there is another good trip. Around the corner, there is another good trip. Well, don't be D and E. Don't play this game that they're playing with you guys. So this may have been a little long for everybody, but honestly, I am hoping and praying to God that you all get vaccinated with this. Because once you get vaccinated with this, then you're safe. Then you're group A. Uber hates you. Lyft hates you. DoorDash hates you. They put the diamonds. They put this. They put that. Whatever color they put, whatever zones they draw, I go like, ah, that's not enough. I need this, buddy. Right? So that's what this segment was about this took like three weeks to put together after talking hours to these behavior and analysts and these people have out of twenty three thousand employees at uber they at least have 10 percent of these employees very well paid very intelligent people working on this day and night that's why a simple task that seems like picking somebody up point a and taking them to point b is not that simple to these people they need to train you and they need to depend on the supply by training you correctly. Because if everybody was like me, there would be no Uber. Okay. But it seems like the rest of the country, they're doing a great job training with these, with this little positive and negative reinforcements. All I can say is, is me here giving you advice when it comes to saying, please don't be D and E, be A, maybe B. Okay. There you go. How do you like that, Chris? Three weeks it took me to talk to a bunch of behavioral analysts. I'm sure they read my mind like a million times and they analyzed me probably really well. And one guy said, honestly, this, this was by luck, okay? I got an email one day. One guy said, Serge, um, I've been watching your show for like a couple of months now. I go, great. I go, I get those all the time. I go, yeah, but because I don't drive, I don't deliver. I go, then what the heck are you doing here? <laughs> the guy goes, I'm a behavioral analyst. And I got hooked to watching you because you have that thing on top of your head. I go, what is that? He goes, that's that. He goes, you know what? You go, you know, I'm going to tell you something. That is the rule. That is the antidote. That is the vaccine for all drivers to be happier and make more money. He goes, please make a segment out of this. I'll help you do it. And he did. And then this is what we came up with. So I hope you all enjoyed it. There you go. Yeah. And don't worry, we're going to have the segment coming out soon, too, so you'll be able to rewatch that or even watch the replay of it. Um, so, all right. Any last things when it comes to nope. that type of stuff? Okay. And, yeah, it, it, I mean, it comes down to gamification. So that's why, you know, the surge that you see, you know, that's something Sergio and I had a conversation with uh, recently, I don't know, maybe like two weeks ago or something you and I did, uh, where... I think it was actually on the, uh, the, the negative surge or the negative base rate. So you saw more surge than what you were getting paid. So it was like plus $13 and they were offering $8 and 59 cents. Um, so like the math doesn't add up. 
But that's what, what I was saying. I'm, I'm getting right to it. I'm like, oh, how much nicer would it see if you saw a surge on every single ride? What's to stop them from just putting that on there? I mean, that's that's kind of the game that they could start playing. And, you know, that's kind of that that whole reinforcement thing. Um, so it's it's definitely interesting to see how things do shape. And then once you realize kind of, you know, the game that they're playing, you can start to see how you can manipulate the game in your favor. Uh, because, yeah, if you don't think that they're building personality profiles on you, think again, because they absolutely are. Um, they, they know so much data on you and they can collect so much data on you uh, and then they compile it and they can create these personality profiles. It's the same yeah. thing with, uh, you know, Facebook. If you haven't been on Facebook, yeah. uh, you, they know exactly how, how much average time between you and, and something else. I, I, if you don't go on Facebook for, let's say, an extended time, go, go off the app for a day or two if you continuously find yourself on there. You're going to start getting notifications. A friend has ma updated their status. Uh, something, something, something. Always, on there's Facebook. always something. Some notification just to get you back on. And there's then you're going to see something. something. Yeah, there's there's, there's, right there's your cherry. There's your couple of cherries at the end. And it happens in social media. And, you know, from the first day, you've been around as long as I have, right? But the apps, how many yeah. changes do you think the app goes through on a weekly, monthly basis, right? Tons, right? Every time yeah. there's a new download, there's a new download, there's something added. There's always something added. Why? Yeah. This is such a simple gig. Pick up a point A, drop off a point B. I mean, why do we need all these? We need it because they're playing with the chemicals in your head and you're hooked. And once you're hooked, you're hooked. And you just got to resist and get vaccinated. That's it. And then again, like I say, if you, if you know the rules, you can go from the D and E's to the A and B's and you're going to see much different. Like, I, I don't know if it's some weird thing you're going on, but, um, you know, I, I told Sergio, like the bonuses that I've been getting recently from both Uber and Lyft over the last like two months is ridiculous. Like every week, a new one comes on. And like right now I have on Lyft, I have uh 40 for 40, or I'm sorry, uh, 40 rides for $300 bonus. And then for Uber, it's 15 rides for a hundred bucks. So it's like, I, I don't know. What, and I'm seeing this constantly. So I don't know if it's that they are building these, these types of profiles on you. And, you know, you're just kind well, of. Well, why do you think, why do you, like Chris, Chris, when you do that for, you know, when you're 40 for 500 or 300, right? When do you think mm -hmm. you're going to do that again? Next week? No. Well, no, I've gotten them three out of the last uh How last many have you finished? Two months or so and finished many, them all. How many have you finished? The one I'm currently in right now. So okay. that once one you finish, started. once you finish, you come back and tell us if you got it again and again and again. Because once oh, they yeah. went, uh, they don't need to reinforce anything because you got your candy now. They're expecting, okay, well, we got hook, Chris Hook now. He's not, you know, <laughs> he did it once. And yeah, then now he's going to do it for less money. Now he's going to do it for less. That's why quests go like this. They never go this way. They go this way. Right? <laughs> the the other thing, Norma Norma's like Lyft is desperate. I, I completely agree. I think so, the, the is, apps are. That, that's uh, that's obviously going to be market dependent. Um, because yeah. like I said earlier, um, the surge that I've been seeing on the app, uh, on both has been so much drastically different in the last two weeks than it has in you know the last few months. So. Yeah. Uh, things are looking better. I think the uh, the dry spell, at least in my area, has kind of gone away. I mean, granted, uh, colleges are back in town. You know, a lot of things are still going on. Um, so, yeah, I think that's part of the reason. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. I'll keep you guys posted, though, but uh, yeah. it's good to see that. All right, thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream, Show Me the Money Club with Sergio and myself, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.